Hello guys! Welcome to the second part of the SAS and Advanced CSS course. Today we are going to create the header of our application. There will be this guitar icon, welcome to guitar world label and also this nice looking call to action button. We will learn what is BEM notation, the block, element and modifier, how to use animations and what we can do with pseudo elements. Ok, so let's get started. First of all, what you need to do is to run our script that we have wrote in the last video. You can use uh, the standard terminal window and you can navigate with the cd command. So cd and folder name and you will enter this and to go back you will use cd and two dots. If you want, you can also of course use the Visual Studio command line, but I will use this uh, normal command line because I want to have more plays on this page. So let's run npm run start, wait a second, and this web page should be running. Ok, so as you can see we've got everything set up, we've got our web page with this red red background. So we can go back and create our first SAS normal SAS file. The SAS files starts always with this low dash and after that the name of this file. We'll call it header .scss. and now what we need to do is to import it to the mine.scss file because this file will contain every file that we are going to make in order to build it and output it as a CSS file. So we can here delete this old code and use import at import with this location to the header file. We don't need to specify this loadash, we can just use header, we don't also need the scss and now everything will be working correctly. We can save this file and get started with writing our code in index.html. Now I will show you two concepts that we are going to use throughout this course. First of this is the emmet. It is a built-in tool in Visual Studio Code that allows us to develop HTML code really, really fast. So what it can do? Let's say for example that we want to create a div with a class called myClass. So we can write that and after that myClass hit the tab button and we've got our div. And that's not all. Let's for example say that we want to make a span with class class span and we want to have five of them so let's just multiply by five hit tab button and we've got everything in our code so we don't need to write everything or copy paste it's a very very useful tool i will show you throughout this course how we can use that and how it's gonna make our work more productive the second concept that i want to show you is the block element and modifier. So let's get started. Let's create our header with class header. And inside of this we will have an image with class, class header image. And as you can see I've created these two low dashes. It's because the header is our block, the header, the image is our element. So we've got our main block of code and inside that we have different elements. For example, let's say the image, then we will have an div with header and as an element will be a label and also we can use modifiers. What is modifier? Modifier will be specified with two dashes 
after the class and it is used in cases when you for example got a button and you want to have a button blue button orange this is a small modification that only changes few properties one to few properties but makes a difference and what two benefits we have from using it you will see everything in scss file how the code will be right so let me first create this structure and then i will show you how we can use it we also need this welcome to guitar world span so let's create a span and let's add it as an element let's call it welcome and inside we can write welcome to guitar world like that and the last thing that we need to have is the button with the shop now label let's just call it button dot header and for example button dash enter with shop now inside of it shop now so you might think that i've used the modifier but it is not a modifier it's still an element one dash doesn't separate the modifier from an element the modifier will be specified with two dashes as i already mentioned so it is a header block with button enter element okay so now when we've got them let's jump to the sas code let me show you the first cool feature of sas let's for example use our created header class and inside of it make a background color red uh, for for this header and in normal css file we will use the header dash dash uh, image to style it so for example we can add there a width of 500 pixels and it will be okay but we won't get the same effect with sas and what improvements we have there we can copy this section of this class enter it here and add the end sign and now we've got everything like before we've got our two classes separated so when i hover over this element you can see that it is not dependent from the header element and it is nice inside of it you can also add normal classes inside of parent classes but it will require the special structure of, of html you don't you don't need this structure when you use bm methodology like i have show you because if you save this you can see in style.scss that, we, that we've got two independent classes the header was put inside of it here it was replaced with the end end sign so we can now here create our other classes the label with two dashes also the welcome and the last one was this button enter with an end before button enter and we've got everything set up we don't need these properties now what we have to do is create the second sas file because we want to have a base file where we specify our variables when we specify our font size and everything like that so the file will be called dash base dot scss and we also need to import it in our main scss file we can make it here at import base and now 
it is OK, we can specify our primary and secondary color of our application that we need. So we can create a variable. Creating variable with size, it is with this dollar sign, color primary, let's call it, and it will be hash 0 e and 4 times 1. And our color secondary, we want to have a hash 3, 5, 3, 8, 3, 9. And now, now when we've got them, we also will specify the font for our page. But before that, we need to import it in the index.html file. Inside of the head section, we will use the link attribute. We can just type link and use tab button to use emmet. The ref, I will copy it. You can find everything in the description. I will link this complete project to this GitHub repository to completed version of this project. So you can copy everything and it will be working. You also need to specify the integrity and oh, not inside of it. You will need to use it here. You can format the document to make it look cool. And we can go back to our base scss file and we can create a variable for it font primary let's call it and it is lato and it will be also sans serif it works it works like uh, when we've got the lato font we'll use it but in case that we haven't the internet connection or, or something like that that we cannot download or if the url is not correct we'll use a other sans serif font so it is just in case of urgency or something like that now what we can specify is the or let me remove that is the clear of the page it is called like that we'll use the this selector this selector selects every element on our page but we also need to specify it to the before pseudo element and to the after pseudo element. And inside of it, we'll call margin to zero, also the same with padding, and the box sizing to inherit. And now, when we've got that, when we create a HTML element, it will not have these properties. It will have these properties overwritten. So it doesn't use the default styles. These styles will be overwritten. The next thing that we need to specify is to the HTML element. We'll add the box sizing. Not box sub, box shadow, box sizing to border box. So what it means? It means that the container, when we add the border to it, it doesn't expand. And for example, when we add a padding or something like that, it is also it is always the same width and height. So now we'll specify the font size, the global font size, and what we want to use. We want to use the rem parameter to specify width and height of elements, and the rem is the root font of a page and mostly it is 16 pixels. So if we want an easy calculation, we want to have one RAM equal to 10 pixels because it will be easy to use. For example, we want 100 pixels, you use 10 RAMs. So what you need to do, you need to divide 10 pixels by the standard 16 pixels and it will be equal to 62.5 percent we will add this percent here because 10 of 16 pixels is 62.5 and i will use it here and now we'll be using only rams on this page in order 
to make our page looking responsive at the end of this course you'll see exactly how much helpful it is the last thing that we need to specify is to the body element we want to have a font fa family specified to our font primary with dollar to this variable that we have created so it will be the later or lato or sans serif another font the color that we want to have will be let's create a new variable for that a color text and it will be equal to 333 so we can now use it color text now we will have the font weight set to 400 and the line height to 1.6 next thing is the background color of our entire page of our entire body element and it will be set to color primary okay so now when you've got everything set up we can create we can start creating our header so thanks for watching and see you in the next part of this course.